Good morning, you guys. So, as promised, we are going to show you how to build a single cup turner uh, using a rotisserie motor. There are some um, parts that have changed a little bit just because we tweaked it. Hey, Lori. Um, but we're going to tell you what those parts are. It's still going to be cost effective. Um, hey, Kristen. But we just want to show you... Um, what we did, so I'm going to actually flip the camera around so Chris can explain to you what he's doing. Hey, Kimberly, um, if we miss any comments when the live is over, I'll go back through and make sure I get your questions. Good morning, Tanya. He's going to go over your part list. He's going to show you how to put it on. He's going to show you that it works. So you guys aren't paying an arm and a leg for your cup turners and having them shipped and sometimes they ship and they get broke. This one you can do on your own. A couple of parts, you're good to go. So I'm gonna flip it around so Chris can get started and show you what you need. And if you have any questions, we're watching the computer from the back. So we will, um, and I know there's a glare because we have the light on, um, but we're gonna be watching the comments. So I can try to help answer or ask him while you have questions. Lori said, hey Chris, Hey everybody. So here we go. I'm going to turn him around. Hey everybody. I've got this pretty much set up as how it would look after everything is complete. Of course, I didn't assemble everything right as we see it. That's pretty much how it's going to look at the end. So I'm going to just simply disassemble now. That way you can see how everything goes. Some of the tools that you're going to need is definitely going to be a Phillips screwdriver. That way you're not tearing up your hands and getting everything in the place. So as you can see, everything comes out all together. Slide this pipe, loosen that screw up. And it comes off like so. I've taken this pipe here. It's the three-quarter inch PVC pipe. I've lengthened the shaft in between the motor and the pulley. That way everything is going to be precise. I wanted to kind of measure everything out. That way you could see. And that's going to be eight and a half inches long. I even brought a pipe cutter in, that way you would be able to see what kind of tools you'll be working with. This is a PVC pipe cutter. And I wanted to show you how it would work, so I'm going to take this 3 quarter inch, just going to place it on the end here, and you just simply start crimping down. And as you can see, that blade is going through, and it's going to cut straight through that PVC pipe and it cuts it completely off. The thing I like about this is it makes a clean cut around the edges. If you took a saw and you could saw it down, of course it's going to cut quicker, faster, but it's also going to leave a mess. This is a smooth edge. That way if you're inside you're not having to work around cleaning up something and making a mess all together. And you can instantly put your ends on that you're going to be working with like so. Any questions so far? So we'll pause for a second and check the computer and see if there's any questions. So if you are good, we're going to keep going. Ethan, if you see any questions, uh, let us know. If you do not have that tool, Lowe's will cut PVC for you, says Kim. Yep. So again, this first measurement on the PVC is going to be eight and a half inches from end to end. You're going to make that for your shaft rod, and then on the end, you're going to put, I had on the parts list, 
this piece here that would allow you to twist on and twist off your football end that would be on the end of that shaft. Of course, it's going to sit down in here. I've got this uh, screw that's going to take place, and whenever we slide it through onto the shaft mechanism, it's going to go in like so. And this screw is going to tighten down on this piece here. And as you can see, there's a ring indention to where the inside of the screw fits. That way you can know it's tight. And the reason for that is because when the motor is turning this shaft, you don't want this PVC to go out of sync. You want it to turn as one as it's turning. The only thing on the parts list that changed was we had the Nerf balls listed. These are actually going to work better. These are spacers. Just regular spacers. Um, Chris said you could find them at the hardware store. Um, this is what they look like not on the turner. So as you can see, it fits the turner perfectly. We actually think that this is going to be a better method. This will eliminate your E6000 glue and you'll just be able to slide those onto the rod for the cup turner. And as you can see on the inside of this, it's going to be close to 5 eighths in diameter as far as inside to inside. The best thing to do is just to take your rod with you and if you have a spacer you can fit it over. That way you'll see it's a perfect fit and you want it to be a little bit snug so whenever you go on and off it'll actually give a little bit of give but it won't twist on you and you'd be able to take it off or so. This spacer is 10 times better than the Nerf ball simply because the Nerf ball gives it tears, it rips, and it would have to be replaced after pulling this rod off and on uh, numerous times. This Tim, here is a hard plastic. Tim wants to know what aisle would they be on, like by the screws and nails? Mostly everything having to do with spacers is going to be on the electrical aisle. The best thing to do is to go on the hardware aisle or the electrical aisle in Lowe's. And if you need some assistance, of course, just ask someone for spacers. And they would direct you in the right direction. But if you can see at the end of this rod, you'll see that this spacer is flush. It fits perfect. And like I said, from inside diameter, it's a 5 8 is the, what the rod the good uh, thing, so. The good thing about the spacers is with the Nerf balls, you had to use E6000 glue. So you would have to sit and wait for your glue to dry before you could actually use your turner. Mm -hmm. With using the spacers, there is no dry time. So once your once your cup turner is done, you can use it right then. That's right. So getting your cup rotisserie set up as solid as possible, that's the end result of what you want. We've done many trial and errors with many different parts. And the Nerf ball, I didn't like from day one because, like I said, even if you drill a perfect hole, sometimes it'll go straight through, but when you're putting it on this rod, it will tear or shift or be uneven. This is going to be the better method that we've found so far. Yes, it does, Kim. It smells horrible. I see that I'm wobbling, so I'm going to sit this down and see if I can just tilt the camera. So to kind of go over everything from scratch, I wanted to give you some measurements. So this base board that you have from end to end, that is going to be 20 inches long. And I picked this up at Lowe's. It was $9.38. It's just a half inch board by five and a half inches wide. It's over where the decorative wooding is, like if you were making shelves or something with woodwork in the lumber section of Lowe's. So again, this is 20 inches long from end to end and five and a half wide by a half inch in diameter. This is going to be the base. And then I've got a one by two which is going to be set sideways, as you can see there. And it's going to be at the very end, flush, 
and I just simply screwed it in at the bottom. I'm going to turn this over and made two screw holes. I always use pilot holes, that way your wood doesn't split. So whenever you take a tiny bit, your wood bit, and just drill through, and then whenever you place your screw in, it's got a way in a direction to go, that way your wood doesn't split on you and it cracks. Also the same thing with our base holder, same thing there. And it's solid, it's not gonna twist on you, and everything lines up nice and neat. Get your rotisserie motor, Everything that comes in the kit from Lowe's right down to this base. These two ends here I've flattened out because they normally curve over because they're designed to go on a grill, not for what we're doing. And I just flattened them out with a hammer, just set them on a hard surface, and of course just tap that buckle until everything flattens out. Then, like as so, Take your screws that come, all of these screws that come the, with the rotisserie come in the kit. So all you're doing is putting this base up against this flat metal piece and you're putting the screws to it and hand tightening just for adjustment purposes. Don't put this into place until you're ready to assemble everything as a final product. As far as this bracket, it's two screws, I screwed down into our one by two, and then I slid the motor down. Now, I found that over time, with this rotisserie rod going in, sometimes when it's turning, it would lift this base up, and it would shift and make things unstable, and of course your cut would get wobbly in the process. So what I found is if you take these screws out and put the motor down and then screw them back into the base. If you can see in between here, there is natural spacers that are already there. These black pieces here where I'm pointing to, they're just black pieces of plastic. So when you take that screw out, these spacers are gonna fall. And the reason being that I attached it to this bracket, that way it keeps it stable. So as you can see, I can't pull this motor up at all anymore, which is a good thing because it stabilizes everything once you've got your rod in there. So as far as the rod, it would normally be anywhere from 24 inches long. So I took my blade and I cut it down to size. So this is going to be 8 inches long from end to end. And again, these spacers, this is the only thing that I've added to that parts list. This piece here already comes with the rotisserie kit. There are two of them that come in that kit. And of course it tightens down onto this square rod. And it keeps it from turning and twisting as you're putting everything together. So short of that, you take this rod once it's cut and you place the end inside the rotisserie. And you wanna make sure that it's snug so you force it all the way to the end until you feel it hit the back of the motor. And then this bracket that we've made should line up. So once you have this in place, as you can see here, it's probably a good inch and a half to an inch and a quarter of space in between these two here. That way from inside the motor, here you've got seven and a half inches from the end of the rod on the insert of that motor uh, rotisserie shaft. So that's about the distance total that you want. Now as you can see everything is pretty much solid here. The only thing that's shifting is this base here and that's because I haven't screwed it down. I wanted you guys to see everything as we were going through. You want to make sure that this is plumb and level and straight before you go and attach this as a final product because you don't want it to be crooked and your shaft be turning like so you want it to be as straight as possible so whenever it's turning it's as smooth as it can be any questions about that all right we'll pause for a second and see if you guys have any questions so just throw them in the comment section or in the chat section, I'm sorry. Hey, Lisa. All 
All right, so any questions? I think we're good so far. All right, no questions. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this shaft is in there secure. You want to tighten down this piece here to make sure it makes good contact with the inner rod here. That way it doesn't give or twist and turn on you. I would recommend using a pair of needle nose pliers or a regular set of pliers. That way you're not pinching your hands and trying to get into a tight spot. You can take it and just turn it from a distance. That way the torque is good on it as you're turning it down. So I've got everything in place of what I'm going to do there. I've got the two screws that I have got in place to come here to the base. 10% righty tighty lefty loosey. That's right. That's what I do, Jennifer, all the time. So all I'm going to do is just basically put this into play. Now, if you feel comfortable using a screwdriver instead of a drill, I would recommend that. That way, if you're not familiar with power tools and you don't want to get yourself hurt or injured in the process of putting this together, but I'm comfortable with power tools. Y'all, he's talking about me. <laughs> I don't want anyone to get hurt. Oh, so. PJ. Okay. Hmm? I was, no, Jennifer was saying this is PJ. Okay, PJ. So you want to line everything up, and like I said, you want this bracket and this shaft rod to be as straight as possible in between the two brackets that we have here. Then once you're satisfied with the positioning, just simply go and you want to screw this down. Take your time going into the wood. You don't want to injure anything yourself. using power tools. If you're not, just take your time and use the screwdriver. And you don't want to use any screw. You want something that's going to be short enough to not go all the way through the base. So that screw was a half inch just regular you can use a wood screw that's what I would recommend and that way it just penetrates just the wood and doesn't come all the way through the bottom and you know whatever surface that you're putting this together on it doesn't impact itself to that so as you can see our base now is solid the rod is solid and the motor is solid you've seen this piece here on our other turners it's also on the parts list it just basically supports the PVC. That way, as it's hanging out from the motor, it doesn't droop down or hang down. I simply just place this over. I position this. I wanted to also give you a measurement on this. That way you can see from top to bottom, from the wood to there, of how high it's going to be. This will eliminate your cup being unlevel and you will avoid those bumps on the rims at the top and the bottom of the cup. So just for prep, I took this PVC, I cut it to size, and I took my threading of the screw that I'm going to use to go down in that shaft. That way it goes through the PVC and touches our spacer. So just slide that in all the way where it makes contact with this and again you can just slowly turn that down until it's snug and that way you can see it doesn't give unless you're like really pulling hard but you want just a little bit of give in between this because as it's turning you don't want things to grind and bind of course make uh make all that racket and a lot a lot of screaming and screeching and everything that goes along with it Where, um, how much 
how was the mount built that's holding the PVC up? This piece is that bracket that we had on the parts list. There is a screw that goes directly down in the center, down to the wood. And that's it. It's just one screw holding it together. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Lisa? Maybe you should have showed them the screen before you put the bracket on there. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Stacy! So what I'll do is to show you, I'm going to loosen this up. Lisa said she didn't. Lisa, it's in the. If you Google my name, there's a parts list, but he's going to show you. What did you say the name of this piece was? This is the bracket holder, but there is just a, a regular wood screw that goes down that attaches itself to the wood base. And this piece is found where? On the electrical aisle. On the electrical aisle, Lisa. On that parts list with the pictures that I showed, everything is listed there along with the price of just about everything that you have. So if you have questions, that would be available for you. Matter of fact, I'll pull it up on my phone real quick. So you can have it right in front of you. And Lisa, I said you could Google my name. I don't know why I keep saying that. If you Google my name, you're not going to find anything. If you search in the group, there's a part list. This is, this is the part. It's called a beam clamp. It's and, a three-eighths beam clamp. And all you need is this, this piece right here. Y'all, I know I'm a shaky camera person. I'm sorry. Y'all know I'm used to doing this stuff sitting down. So we're going to take the uh, PVC. We're going to slide it back on. We're going to tighten it back down. You're welcome. Pretty much everything that we have going, this is going to be your finished product, other than where you would attach your PVC on this end with your football. This is the football that we got from any Dollar Tree that you can find. Normally it's got a uh, foam, arrow. foam arrow. These are like for kids to throw outside and it's fun for that different type of this is this is what they look like. The could this be? Could is the hole he put the wood? Yes, Lisa. Could this be what? You know what does it mean? Stacy, you could probably make it as big as you want. Um, this is what the football looks like from the dollar store. Um, mine does not just have them laying around. They're actually on the toy aisle in a big box in my, in my store. But if you check this out, if you pull this piece out, you pop it out, you already have a pre, um, how big is this piece of wood the bracket sitting on? From Hold top on. to bottom. From top to bottom. That is three inches. Three inches. From top to bottom. Um, PJ, we, I don't think, the, I know the bracket has a hole, but we just drilled it into the wood. You're welcome. So this is what you're going to put your other PVC pipe on. And the good thing about this is the piece that connects to the end of it you can work on your cup like y'all see me doing. I'm holding my cup. I'm working on my cup. And then I'll just come right over here and screw it in. I know, right? These kids are not going to have any footballs. So this is what it looks like. We're frozen. Why is it frozen? Type, type, um, tell them that we know it's frozen. Yeah. Okay. 
Hold on, guys. We're trying to fix it. There we go. Okay. I think we're back. Oh, my name it is. Okay. So, it's already got a hole. Okay. So now he's going to show you how to cut your football to fit your other piece of PVC pipe. So what you want to do is whenever you just simply pull out this insert that's here, just simply just pull and twist at the same time and this plastic piece is going to come off like so. I simply just take my razor blade and I, you'll see where the foam comes together. I just take and I gently go and make two cuts. Not too much force because you don't want it to slip and cut your hand. About half an inch. And then I turn it to the other side. And then I do the same thing. Turn it once more. And then one more time. So basically you want a cross in cuts that you have. And as you can see, it's got the tears. That's where the football comes apart. And the reason you want that is because whenever you take your PVC that's going to attach to this end, you want it to have just a little bit of give. That way whenever you're putting it on, you've got control over the football. And you can make it straight. And you can align this football. Because if you see it now, look at the football. It's kind of off. You want to keep this to where you can adjust it. And as you're turning it, you've got control over the football. And you can straighten up that football as you twist it on. Because whenever you go to put your cup on in the twister, you don't want this to be wobbling all over. So as you can still see, it's still a little bit off. So that's because there's still some foam still stuck up in there. So you have to adjust and play with that until you get this football on straight. You don't want to secure it down and tighten it down. You don't want to tape it. You don't want to do anything until you've got this football to the position of where you want it to be. And always have a few of these on hand because if you're going to make multiple rotisserie turners, you want to be able to have these on hand. That way you can have these as stands and have another one and so on and so forth. Any questions about that? I get it to where it almost touches the end. That way it's got full contact. About how deep do you think the PVC goes in? If you can see as far as measurement, I'll pull it out. So anywhere from three to four inches, I would get, even go to four inches. That's why I say go almost to the end. And we'll do the length of the football. So four inches from the tip to there is going to put you right about... The pink area or pink the area. orange area. If you're using the orange one, it'll put you in the area of the orange. So just force that down and twist. You want to leave a little bit for a handle so you have something to work with. That way whenever you're holding the cup, you can adjust it to anything that you need to turn and modify. And just for uh, purposes, you can either glue on the inside there or like I, I find, do. I find the electrical tape works better. How long is that PVC pipe? So this PVC pipe, I just had pre-cut. I wasn't really measuring for this, but this one just so happens to be seven and a half. 
from end to end. Now if you want to make it a little bit longer, you could go to 9 inches. That would be manageable. It would give you a little bit more grip as far as your hand. Because whenever you put these pieces on, those are taking up a good half inch. Because you want it to touch the inner rim of this whenever you slide it on or take it off. Any questions about that? This again, this part here is on the parts list. This is going to be found where the PVC pipe is and the plumbing department. On one end, you can see where your PVC would slide in, your three-quarter inch. That and on the opposite that, end, it has threading to where you can twist on and off. That piece that screws onto the PVC pipe, what's it called? That piece in your hand. It's male and female end. This is a three-quarter inch PVC coupling to where you can twist on and it's got threading. You want a female in and a male in. Yes, you glue it down on both pieces with that, the medium clear PVC cement. Yep, get both. All of this is going to be in your plumbing aisle. You're welcome. This is about three and a half, four dollars. And this is for regular PVC. They make multiple types. If you get this in the orange label, it'll work, but it's really made for heat. So like if you had hot water, this would be for hot water. We're not using anything that's going to be heated. So a regular base of the clear would be just fine. Do you glue the ball on the PVC? No, we just tape it. Show her that um, one that was done in your hand. So as a final product, this would look exactly the end result. I just simply tape the tape and go around the outer rim of that football, attaching it to this. Because like I said, over time wear and tear on the football, you want to be able to take it off and be able to save this PVC and use it again. It's the female threading that we're going on. It's the same thing that we have. Okay. I don't have one like that. So, as far as the end that would go here, it would need to be the female side, which we can show you that in just a moment. That's on one of our other cut turners. I thought that I had the, a complete full kit with me. So whenever we go around, and I'll show you what the threading on the opposite side would look like. This would be the inner side that you would screw your PVC pipe in. And this is the female side, which is going to be located in the plumbing department also. Same section. This will just be the opposite of the male side and the threading is on the inside, so whenever you twist together, you would slide your cup rotisserie, and it would connect like so. She said, does the male side go first? I don't think it matters. Does it? Either, it doesn't matter. Either side that you put it on is fine. It doesn't matter. And so, at the end, you're going to have a female, a male, your PVC, and the football and the tape. And that's pretty much it. So as you're looking, you can take your other turner. So if you had something on here and you wanted to take off, you just simply twist it off, and you can carry it around in your hand like so, and your cut would be on there secure. Lisa, what you confused about? Absolutely, Kim. 
Um, we built a multi-cup turner, but I think because of the weight of the cups and the weight of the epoxy, we just, it, it would stall, it would jerk. So we took that apart, and I prefer the single cup turners by far, hands down, all day long. To me, when you have one motor running multiple cups, I think it just bogs down the motor, in my opinion anyway. So I'm all for a single cup turner. I'd rather have five single cup turners than a big one. So now he can, being that this doesn't have the piece attached, he can still plug it in and show you how smooth it runs. Now I know we don't have a cup on here, but you'll still see. I just put this on for general purposes. So you okay, can see. so the PVC pipe that he screwed into that mount, what part is it? It doesn't matter, Lisa. You can put the male in first. You can put the female in first. Um, ma majority of my cup turners have the male first. We just accidentally put the female in on this one first. But it doesn't matter because the end result is you want to be able to unscrew it and screw it. So he's going to cut it on where you can see. Even though um, all that's on here is a football, you're going to still be able to see how smooth it turns. So whenever you turn on your motor, that's essentially what you're going to get right there. And your cup is going to spin. He's just holding the football because it's not secured on there. So you see how smooth that is? Yeah, mine did too, but this one, as you see, there's no jerking movement, there's no flopping, Every, everything is turning as one solid piece. And what does that is these um, spacers. It keeps everything turning as one piece. And then you just get the cup decorating. And that's it. Okay, so that is female. Okay, so now the PVC pipe that we have in our hand, what part do we put closest to the end to be able to screw? It doesn't matter, Lisa. You can put the male in first or the female. It doesn't matter. Because it's still going to screw on regardless. So just to kind of make sense, everybody, let's pretend that this were the female. And this is the male as it is. Whenever you go to screw on, it would just essentially lock together like so. Just pretend that this is one solid piece and you could just screw it on or screw it off. So whether you put the female on this side or the male on this side and vice versa, as long as you've got a connection to where you can screw these two pieces together, that way you can take this off and on and not have to disturb this mount and move it and wear and tear and you want it to be something that you can interchange a cup holder on the fly right and see and like i have a bunch of footballs so i can just swap them out if this turner is empty and i'm working on a cup i can just take one of my other mounts and screw it on there and go so how will we screw it? Does both pipes or each part gets one or the other? At the at the end of this pipe that's gonna go all thrown, like I said, you can either have the male like that and the female on this side, or you can have the female on this side and the male on that side like so. It's just gonna screw on like a screw, Lisa. Like you said, if this piece were this is the female Pretend like this is the female. It's going to have threading on the inside. So when you go to turn it, you're just going to hand screw it. You're just going to screw it on by hand. And that's it. And these are sturdy. These, it's not going to move. Your Everything that you can see, I can move the whole cup turner. And nothing moves except for the base. And it's very lightweight. You can pick it up. You can move, move it. You can move it out of the way. If, you're, if your space is limited, you can...
scoot it over to the counter. I've done it on my stove. I mean, I've done it everywhere. This piece is never going to come off. This is permanently attached by this screw, so you don't have to worry about this coming undone. And then you just put your cookie sheet underneath it. You can get these for 88 cents at Walmart, or you can go to the Dollar Tree. The reason for this pan is to keep, keep your drippings from getting on any of the surface, like if you've got it on a countertop or anything that you don't want to get damaged. You just simply put this under. That way, whenever this is fully assembled, your cup is turning, the drips are falling down into the pan, and it's a nice clean mess. You can use, yeah, you can still use parchment paper because when the epoxy dries, um, it's not going to seep through the parchment paper. She said, I want to build this one for my second turner. I saw the supply list, but can't find the measurements for the wood. We didn't put the measurements for the wood on the supply list. So, um, I know in the beginning we measured, but... We'll measure it again. Um, Lisa said, Chris, just build me one. I got you $5. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as the wood... Which is the base of the side turner. To side, it's five and a half inches wide by a half inch thick. So it's only a half inch thick. And from end to end, as far as length, it's 20 inches. Then your piece here that holds your stabilizer from top to bottom, that's three inches. And all this is is a one by two. So it's two inches wide by an inch thick. Same thing here. Same piece of wood, I just cut it down. And this piece here that the motor sits down on, this is five and a half. That way it goes from side to side there. Everybody's the saying you just make, make theirs and they'll, uh, one, uh, who was it that said, I, I'll give you 50 and 50 dollars. I think you're going to be a professional builder. <laughs> Y'all are silly. Somebody said, I'll give you chicken and ham. Well, friends, I can promise you, I've made probably seven or eight of these, and this is by far one of the easiest to assemble. It's stable. There's no give in that. That's what I like about this. It has no give, no play. And and this piece here is more for um is to keep, this to keep your rod level. straight instead of turning, instead Whenever of sagging. You have a level and you can put on there. If you have a torpedo level and you put it on this rod from end to end, you see it'll show it. You don't level. want it to be down and your cut always be uneven. So whenever it's turning, that rod is essentially just pretend like this is that rod inside the rotisserie. If it's not level, it's going to be wobbly, and it's going to tear up the inner mechanism here on your gear, plus your cut's going to be off. So whenever you have this assembled, you want you this see it's ball level. Up. Yes, I'll add the measurements to the part list. You want this ball to be right there in between these two black lines, so you can see that this is plumb and level. Um, what did you say the name of this is called again? A bean clamp. It's a bean clamp, Lisa. And Ethan's going to throw it in the comment section. And really, the, the size of your board, um, it depends on how big or how wide you want it. Me, I don't have a lot of space until my shop gets built. So these are perfect. Three-eighths bean clamp, yep. Kim's got it. So I can bring up the parts that I've already put on the parts list. As some of the things that you're going to use. You're welcome, Kim. I mean, uh, you're, yeah, you're welcome, Lisa. Now, as you can see here, this is the adapter that's going to be the mail. It's 38 cents. And then you've got the female adapter. That's 47 cents. And then as far as the wood or the PVC itself, this piece here, 
That's the measurement for it. It's three quarter inch by five foot long. Now you can get probably two or three good cuts out of that, depending on how long you want your uh, cut turner rod shafts to be. Ain't that right, Kim? Kim said females are always more expensive. That's right. There is your glue, your all-purpose cement. Now, you can either buy the all-purpose, which is the easier, or if you wanted to go back to your medium-grade black label. Now, if you notice, that has a red label, this has a black label, and then you've got a orange label. It just basically tells you the difference between the glues and what their purpose is. You do not want the orange because you're not running hot water. So you just need the the all-purpose or the medium clear PVC. There's your 3 8 beam clamp, Lisa. And those are 338 a piece. Now this uh, little threaded rod screw, you don't need that. I just unscrew it and throw it in that box back at Lowe's. <laughs> as far as some of the threading screws, if you lose what comes in that kit, the rotisserie kit, I've also included the threading on that. Those are 32 by one and a quarter inch. These are on the hardware aisle at Lowe's. You notice that the threaded screw is there and the lock nut washer that comes in with it. That's a motor that we use for another kind of uh, Richest Returner. Don't care for those because they get too hot. We've used them, but the back here gets so hot, you can put it, your hands on it, and you can't keep it there but a second. And that's because it's a microwave motor, yes. and microwaves are not designed to um, run for six hours at a time. Whereas a rotisserie motor is designed to run longer, um, you know, for a longer period of time so the motor doesn't get hot. And the screw that I have here that goes through the PVC pipe, this is the, it's a six millimeter by 12 millimeter screw. And that just thing rotated, but that's the threading size. For that and so, again you can find that on the same aisle as the hardware and the screws that are at Lowe's. So does that help you guys? The cement um, is to hold these pieces intact because you don't want these wobbly. I had a cup that we forgot to cement this piece and as it was turning the screw worked itself loose and my cup fell. So if you cement this piece on this end and you cement the piece on your the one that you hold, you cement it on this one, then your cup doesn't come off. And what you want to do is you, you want to take that glue and be very, very careful not to get it on your skin. Just take it and go on the inner side here. And then just push it and on. And then you put your PVC and you snug it until you feel the PVC match up on the inside. To this thread in here so you you'll have to give it a little bit of torque and turn and you'll feel it touch on the inner rim here and then of course once you put it on there with glue give it about four to five minutes and it'll be solid as a rock uh, they are called spacers the black pieces are just called spacers and he said you could find those at the hardware store um, or Lowe's. Or Lowe's. But this seems to be, we tried the Nerf balls. And when you take your cup on and off, on and off, on and off, um, it wears those little Nerf balls down. This is plastic. So you can take that cup on and off 15 times and it's not going to wear it thin. And also, you, you have to think, with this being firm and secure, there's no give to this. That rod is not shifting, it's not moving. You can turn this just a little bit, but you want just a tiny bit of give because you've got a lot of gears that are turning together. So if it was firm and solid as a rock, it's gonna, it's gonna burn your motor it up. It would burn up this motor and you don't want that. 
So there's just a little bit of give around that. And like I said, from inside diameter, from side to side, don't go by the outside, but the inside where your uh, rotisserie rod is going to go through, that's 5 8 And should you want to explain this to someone at Lowe's, if, if you want to take this rotisserie that you purchased from Lowe's and just take that rod out of the box and have that spacer to where you can slide on and off, that's what I would recommend. So essentially, let's pretend this is the rod and you don't want it to be loose to where it just falls completely off. You want it to be firm and secure. Um, why would you keep taking that part of the PVC off the time? Kim, because when you're working on a cup, let me show you. Can you walk over here where you, they can see this part? Can you buy smaller wood pieces that size already or do you have to cut them? I, I cut them all myself. Okay, so this is why... Can you hold this and I'll show her. So this is why you take them all. So let's say I'm working on this cup and I'm done. And then I want to put it on my turner. This is one that we didn't modify very well. So this piece just screws on here. Then I can take this and move to another cup. So whenever you twist these two pieces here, you've got the female and you've got the male. So whenever I cut my motor on, you'll see them turn together in sync. Now this is one of our older models, so don't pay any attention to this stuff. But the parts is the same. Me personally, I like being able to work on a cup. I like to be able to work on a cup on my hand and then attach it. So that's why, Kim, I hope that helped answer. Now the rotisserie turners that we have here, like I said, I've done many modifications. And as you can see, one of the first ones that we did here. No, Kim, the spacer's not in the handle. It's in the piece that attaches. This piece doesn't come off. The only piece that comes off is this piece. This is the only piece that comes off. The spacers stay in here. There's nothing in there. It's empty. It's completely empty. So there's nothing in there. The spacers are in here. And as you can see, this older model, it has the Nerf ball in there, but I don't really care for that because you see the rod on the inside, it's pushed up against the top of the PVC. And she as it's died. turning, it kind of gives it uh, some not so even stability as it's turning. I wanted something that way when everything turned together, it was as level and secure as possible. That's right, Michelle. Wait till he sees what Michelle said. My husband had a table saw never opened in the garage for six years. He was impressed I busted that bad boy out to build my first turner. Just wait until he sees this one. That's right. Y'all don't look at my mess with my popsicle sticks. Okay, so that's essentially it, y'all. I mean, it's, it, it sounds confusing, but this is an in-depth look at how to do it. And it was so in-depth to try to answer any questions that you guys might have. Y'all, do not pay somebody $200 to build you a cup turner. Do not do that when you can do it yourself. As far as parts, the rotisserie is $38. The rod, this clamp here, this yes, brace Lisa. here, all comes together. The only essential things that you're going to have to purchase is one board of the 1x2. And that's $2 and some change at Lowe's. The PVC, that's $2 and some change at Lowe's. Your end pieces, the male and the female. And this beam clamp. In this piece of wood. So nice, Michelle. Total investment. You've probably got about 70 to 80 bucks total. And most of that cost is coming from the rotisserie motor. As far as the rest, like I said, maybe 20 bucks, 25 bucks total. And it's, it's yours. You can do and modify as you please. It may not be the sexiest thing on the planet, but... 
if it gets the job done and it makes your job easier, that's what it's about. Would Ace Hardware have the same parts? Yes. I'm not sure about the wood, but as far as this, as far as PVC, the beam clamp, the screws. Yeah, Trina, the rod is right here. You just can't see it. The rod from the rotisserie motor is right here. And it goes in to this. You just only see this portion of it. Because the more rod you have, your cup's going to start to lean a little bit. But see, it's turning. If you look at this little screw hole, you can see no jarring, no, no hang-ups, just smooth. And it's level, which equals level epoxy. Because your epoxy is self-leveling. So if your epoxy is self-leveling and your cup turner is unlevel, guess what? Your epoxy is going to be unlevel. So we'll let that run for a few seconds and let you see. I did see it move up a little bit, but I think it's where mm -hmm. this piece is. But your cup is level. So y'all can do it. Y'all y'all can do it. Y'all don't pay nobody $200 for no cup turner. And they're going to charge you shipping on top of that. Y'all know I'm cheap. Oh, thank you. She said you're wonderful too. Thank you. So do anybody have, do y'all have any questions before we hop off of here? Yeah, and, and Trina, the reason why you have that lip is because your turner is not level. She said y'all. Your turner's not level, so when your epoxy starts to level out, it's going to, it's going to shift to where the, the part of the cup leans, which is nine times out of ten, the lip. Lisa, what do you need my address? What's the size of the screw? What's the size of this screw again? That screw, I'll give it the threading type and the size. And I'll have to paste it on this picture. So that's a six millimeter by 12 millimeter screw. Lisa wants my address so she can send you her parts to build it. Lisa, you can do it. You did that fabric cup. Stop playing. You did that fabric cup with no cup turner. You can build this cup turner, I promise. So has anybody got any more questions before we hop off? And I'm gonna um, I'm gonna also share this video in the group. I know it seems like a lot of information, but guys, you can do it. Do you really love a, Do you really live up the road from me? Is that PJ? PJ, where do you stay at? Greenville. That's not right up the road technically, PJ. Look, and I'll be honest with y'all because y'all know I'm all about honesty. It's not that we don't want to build and sell them. And it's not that we don't want to um, help you guys out. It's just if we build it, then it makes us responsible for the parts. And Chris works five days a week, so it would be hard for him to repair anything or, um, you know, make sure that everything runs smoothly. Now, you are more than welcome to call me, FaceTime me while you're building it, and we will help you. I promise y'all, y'all can do it. Y'all glitter in epoxy cups. Lisa said, I just want to build. Yes, yeah, shipping would be more than the cost of the turner. Kathleen says, thank you for sharing and helping me, Chris. Absolutely. And y'all, this is a video. Play it, pause it, play it, pause it until you get it going. 
and you will um, you'll have it. I do want to reiterate on this pipe cutter what you would use to cut PVC. This blade is super sharp, so please be very careful and when you're putting your pipe in to cut, because you can easily go and accidentally get your finger too close to this. And if it'll cut through this PVC, it'll cut straight through your hand. So please, whenever you're cutting through, just be as gentle and secure and safe as possible. And that goes for anything that you're assembling. Whether you're using a drill, a hammer, a saw, please you're be welcome. careful on doing so. You're welcome, Renee. And y'all, he's not saying y'all are clumsy. He will tell you. He's been with me for over 20 years. I am clumsy. I am clumsy. I don't do good with razor blades. I don't do good with spoons. Y'all, I am clumsy. So, yes, please be careful when using especially the PVC cutter. Because if it'll cut through that PVC, right? <laughs> PVC, poor guy. Um, if it'll cut through that PVC, it will cut through your bone, no doubt. So, just be careful, y'all. But I'm curious to see all y'all running out to get parts. I need to see these finished products. A lot of y'all are on my friends list. Y'all have added me as a friend. If you don't have, um, if you don't have an iPhone and you can't FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, tell me you need me to see something. Y'all Facebook message me and we will walk you through it. We have no problem doing that. So if y'all don't have any more questions, then we are going to hop off of here. Have you, yes, Renee, we did, um, we did do one with the microwave parts. Again, the microwave motor, because it's not designed to spin, would Lowe's cut the wood for you? Absolutely. Yes, they will. If you purchase the wood. If you purchase the wood from them, they will cut it for you. Um, we do have one with the microwave motor, but microwaves are not designed to spin for six hours at a time. Um, so we find the rotisserie better. Robin said, my cable guy dropped his PVC cutter inside my fence. So thanks to the cable guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. And you know how to reach me if you have any questions. Um, I am going to attempt a geo cup today. Um, and if it works out well, I will have a live for you guys to watch. Um, Y'all make sure that you subscribe, like this video, subscribe, make sure you share, help your fellow crafters save money on these turners that they're buying for ridiculous prices. At least I said go live anyway. Yes, Trina, you can do it. Sharing is caring, that is right. I love her. Um, but if y'all need any help, I'm just a messenger away. Chris is home the weekend. You know, if y'all need, if you've got the parts and you get stumped on something, just video us so we can see what you're doing because it's kind of hard to explain over the phone. That's why we wanted to do it this way so you guys could watch. So, I'm off to attempt the geode cup. And you guys are off to build your cup turner. So, I hope you have a great Saturday. And I will see you guys soon in Facebook. I will talk to y'all later. Bye. Yes, Karen, I will add those to the Facebook list. I will. Bye, y'all.